In this video, we'll see why when we stretch or shrink a circle in one direction, we get an ellipse. But those two cases come down to just one case. Stretching a circle in one direction is the same as stretching it in all directions and then shrinking it in the perpendicular direction. So, whether we stretch the smaller circle or shrink the larger one, we get the same result. Let's denote the center of the circle by O and let's put an XY coordinate system with its origin at O. If the circle intersects the X axis at negative A and A, then it intersects the Y axis also at negative A and A. And let's say that our shrunken circle intersects the Y axis at negative B and B. In one of previous videos, we used A and B to denote the semi major and the semi minor axis of an ellipse. But we don't yet know that our shrunken circle is an ellipse. And to show that it is, we need the definition of an ellipse. When we defined an ellipse, we used focal points F1 and F2. Now we'll make an educated guess that they are somewhere on the x axis, symmetric with respect to O. Let's call a point on the shrunken circle P. And if our shrunken circle is also an ellipse, then F1P plus F2P must be equal to 2A. In particular, that is also true when P is on the y axis. In this case, F1P is equal to F2P, so each of them must be equal to A. From the Pythagorean theorem, we can find OF2. And it's equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. Now we can put focal points at right places. And OF1 is also equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. So F1P plus F2P is equal to 2A for this particular point P. To show that it's also true for other points of the shrunken circle, we'll need the corresponding point of the original circle which we'll denote by P'. prime. Since we shrink the circle in the y direction, then the x coordinates of P and P' prime are the same, while the y coordinate of P' prime is equal to A over B times the y coordinate of P. And this relation between coordinates is true for every pair of corresponding points P and P'. Prime. But P' prime is on the circle of radius A, which means that xP' prime squared plus yP' prime squared is equal to A squared. We'll substitute xP' prime and yP' prime with corresponding expressions. And we get xP squared plus A over B times yP squared is equal to A squared. From there we get the expression for yP squared. Which is equal to B squared minus B squared over A squared times xP squared. Let's show xp and yp on the image. We want to calculate f1p plus f2p. Again, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So f1p squared is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared plus xp and all of that squared plus yp squared. But we already have the expression for yp squared. Now we'll transform this expression to a more convenient form. First, we square what's inside the parentheses. We have minus b squared and plus b squared, so they cancel out. In the next step, we take out the common factor xp squared in front of the parentheses. Then we divide and multiply by a the middle term. And for the expression inside parentheses, we put everything over a squared. Now, this entire expression has the form of the square of a binomial. 
and it's equal to a plus xp times the square root of a squared minus b squared over a and all of that squared. So that's f1p squared, which means that f1p is equal to the absolute value of the expression inside parentheses. But xp is always between negative a and a. And you can verify that the expression inside the absolute value will always be positive which means that f1p is equal to a plus xp times the square root of a squared minus b squared over a. And similarly, for f2p, we have that f2p squared is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared minus xp, and all of that squared, plus yp squared. And again, we have the expression for yp squared. Following the same steps as before, we get that f2p is equal to a minus xp times the square root of a squared minus b squared over a. Finally, when we add f1p and f2p, we get that f1p plus f2p is equal to 2a. Now, by the definition of an ellipse, point p is on the ellipse defined with focal points f1 and f2 and the semi-major axis a. And since p was an arbitrary point on the shrunken circle, that means that our shrunken circle is also an ellipse.